Good evening and welcome to this service to mark Baby Loss Awareness Week. Join us in St Mary Magdalene Church here in Littleton and together we want to share this journey of grief that we're all travelling on. Maybe you lost a baby at birth. Maybe you had one or a whole series of miscarriages. Maybe you suffer the grief of never being able to have children yourself. Maybe you're a grandparent and you've seen a grandchild die. Whatever stage we are at, we all journey in this together. We all have pain, we all have tears, we all have many unanswered questions. But tonight we want to mark this moment um, by hearing interviews with mums who have lost children, with hearing poetry, by praying together and by lighting a candle. A candle that again reminds us that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. And in the middle of our pain and our grief and our journeys with our children who we will never forget, there is always hope. This evening we will have a whole variety of things to go through our service. In a moment I'll lead us in an opening prayer during which we'll light a candle. I invite you to do the same, to light this candle that goes with the wave of light that is being lit by uh, parents, grandparents, friends, churches all over the country to mark this moment. We'll then hear uh, different poems. We'll then, as I say, have an interview uh, with two mums who've lost children. We'll then have a song to mark um, this time and for us to have our own personal time of quiet and reflection and then we'll end our short service with a blessing. So I'll begin our service now with an opening prayer during which I will light a candle and invite you to do the same. As we come together today, we acknowledge our children. Children we have longed for and children no longer with us. We join together with thousands around the country in recognising our loss pain and grief through the lighting of candles. Father God, we come before you this evening, just as we are. We know you see our hearts and hear our pain and longing. As our hearts break, so does yours. God, you promised that you would send the Holy Spirit to us to hold us through the dark times. And we ask for that spirit of comfort now. As we light these candles, we commit the name of our child longed for and our longed for children into your hands. And thank you that they are surrounded by your lights and your love. Help us in our grief to know your peace and the depth of your love for us. Amen. Just take a moment to focus on your candle. I remember your child. And now we'll have our opening poem read to us by Leslie, who lost her child 40 years ago. Grief by Gwen Flowers. I had my own notion of grief. I thought it was a sad time that followed the death of someone you love and you had to push through it to get to the other side. But I'm learning there is no other side. There is no pushing through, but rather there's an absorption, adjustment, acceptance. And grief is not something you complete, but rather you endure. Grief is not a task to finish and to move on, but an element of yourself, an alteration of your being, a new way of seeing, a new dimension of self. We're now going to hear from two mums, from Rachel and Sarah, both of whom who have suffered the pain 
of losing children. The stories are powerful and poignant and I really hope they help you on your own grief journey. Hello ladies, um, just to introduce um, you both, we just thought it'd be a really good opportunity um, to interview a couple of ladies who have experienced their own loss and we know that everyone's story is different. Some people might have experienced loss very early in pregnancy, some later, um, and um, everyone's story is unique and valid, but we just thought it'd be really good to help raise awareness um, of Baby Loss Awareness Week, um, but also to get some of uh, people's personal stories. So um, welcome to Sarah and Rachel. Hi guys. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, do you want to just tell everyone a little bit about your stories? Who wants to go first? I, yeah. I don't. Do, do okay. I don't first? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, this is off to a good start, isn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Our little girl, Maisie, was um, stillborn last year. At the, I was 32 weeks pregnant and she was our second child. We already have a little boy um, who was two at the time that it happened. So I went into hospital with reduced movement, um, which I'd done even when I was pregnant with Leo, my first child, um, and everything was fine. I just put you on the monitor for sort of half an hour. Everything was fine, went home. So I was just expecting, obviously, the same thing to happen. And then when I was in there, it obviously escalated into the fact that they couldn't find a heartbeat. So that happened on the Tuesday. So we then went, had to go home. And then we went back in on the Thursday when I was induced and then she was born that afternoon. And Rachel, what was your story? Yeah, so um, similar to Sarah in that uh, we lost our, our second um, son uh, in 2017. And I, I remember being more anxious with the second pregnancy than with Jude, our elder son, I think, I think you're maybe a bit more aware of things that could go wrong or I don't know, but I um, got to the sort of 12 week scan and everything was fine. And I just totally relaxed at that point and just thought, okay, we've got over the danger zone. Everything will be fine going forward. Um, so I was, I was over five months, uh, went for a routine scan. Um, and I just remember the lady saying, I'm so sorry, uh, there's no heartbeat. And I was just in complete shock because I thought I was feeling movement, I had a growing bump, um, I had no indication at all that anything was wrong. Um, and same as with Sarah, you, you go into St Peter's, they start the induction process and then you go back two days later and you're induced and then um, uh, give birth. Um, so our little boy Solomon um, was born and um, yeah we we had some time with him um, and and then that was that was it really so um, yeah to both of you and yeah your other halves and your families as well um, yeah so sorry to hear your stories um, but I'm sure it's also brings encouragement to people because it's something that's not talked about very much. Um, and we know with Baby Loss Awareness Week, um, this week, um, people probably don't know um, a lot about it unless they've actually lost um, a baby. Uh, what, what would you say um, that people generally don't know about baby loss? Um, I would say probably the first thing people don't know is how common it is. Um, so one in four pregnancies will end in loss, um, which is just awful. Um, and then stillborn is something like eight babies a day, um, one in 250, um, according to Tommy's. So I think, I think people just are very naive to how often it happens, how common it is. Um, I think also the other thing is Sarah and I have talked about this a lot. I don't think people are aware of the process either. Um, you know, that you, you go into hospital and you're induced in the same way as if you were going to be induced with a live baby and you give birth in exactly the same way. Um, and you know, we, 
we both were given medication to stop our milk coming in. I lost hair in the same way as you, you would do if, if, if your baby um, had lived. So I, I think people just aren't aware of, of that element of it. And then I think also lastly, I think people also perhaps don't understand the range of emotions that baby loss can cause. So obviously there is the grief and the sadness, um, but there's also a huge loss of confidence, um, shame, guilt, all of, all of those things. Like I, I found it really hard to go out for a really long time. Um, I just, just lost all kind of confidence in myself and in my body. But also, there's the other, other end of the spectrum as well, that actually my birth with Solomon was incredibly healing. I'd had a really difficult time with Jude and Solomon's birth was a lot more straightforward and just being able to give him the dignity of birth and have that time with him um, was actually just full of so much love and so much kind of positivity so I guess what I would kind of say that people don't aren't always aware is that it's yes what has happened is absolutely tragic and awful but be guided by the mum and the family because there is also a lot of love there and a lot of things that um that, that are uh, I don't want to say positive because that doesn't sound right but a lot of stuff that's very you know what I'm trying to say there's there's a lot of beautiful precious things that come out of their existence that um that you know it's not just a terrible terrible thing that has happened mm. that makes sense yeah yeah I definitely you know agree with all of that I think it's strange when you do lose a baby is I don't know if people don't think about the things about you know giving birth and stuff because it is difficult to think about and and I think people almost sort of want to block that off they don't want to think mm. about it but you do have to give birth it is exactly the same as how it is if you are having a live baby it's not like they just sort of you know disintegrate and go away it's you know um, I, I think a lot of people don't realize the, the the detail of um you know you are giving birth you're then having to you know plan some sort of funeral for them mm or you know having them cremated or you know all of that sort of thing you have to do you have to you know we had to go to the registry office and register her you know and that's all the little things that you don't you never really think about yeah mm. and what has helped you both through your loss for me definitely what helped was talking about it um I'm quite a talkative person anyway <laughs> uh so and I, I you know was lucky enough that my husband as well is the same so we talked a lot about everything about how we were feeling we were lucky enough to have friends and family around us who also were happy to talk about it because a lot of people don't want to talk about things but I really think for me that helped me massively because if I'd kept it all inside and didn't have anybody to talk to, you know, I, I think things would have been a lot different. It definitely was really, really important for me to just get those sort of things out. And even now, you know, we're now like over a year on from when Maisie was born. But even now for me, talking about her is still so, um, you know, it just feels good to yeah. just talk normally yeah. um, about her um and just having the support system around you to allow you to do that yeah um and also for me which isn't exactly a good thing because obviously I don't want I wouldn't want anybody else to have gone through this but I did have people that I know who have been through a similar thing Rachel being one of them that was a massive help to me because straight away when we found out about what had happened you know Rachel was one of the people that contacted me it was just nice to be able to get some advice from somebody who had been through a similar situation because yeah. you're going into it completely blind. You don't know, you don't know what it's going to be like, what's going to happen. That was really helpful, which I know obviously there'll be lots of people that wouldn't have that situation where they know people. Uh, but there are still things online. I know you don't know them personally, but there are things online where you can, you can get into contact with people who 
you know have, have gone through a similar thing and it's really helpful yeah. um and also i think for me it did help having my son around because he was only two he didn't understand what had gone on so when we came home he was staying at my in-laws and then when, when we brought him home it was just it was actually quite helpful to me to just have you know i had to look after him so i had to sort of just get up and and mm. make breakfast and all of that sort of thing because he needed me to help him um so that was definitely helpful to me and also just being it's very difficult when you when you lose a baby that you are a mum because you've had a child but that child's not there and I think if it were if that happened with your first child that would be really difficult mm -hmm. to be a mum but mm -hmm. you're not a mum to other people because there's no yeah. they can't see your child whereas mm -hmm. me, I know I am a mum to two children and I you know the, the world doesn't know that when we're out and about but I still have somebody that's calling me mum mm -hmm. I still you know I'm openly to the world a mum mm. so that was definitely helpful mm. I, I really feel for people where it's happened first time round and you you just sort of have to get on with life and I don't know it just must be really difficult so mm. he definitely was a massive a massive help to me yeah yeah what about for you Rachel yeah I think similar to Sarah really talking um I had um, counselling which was so helpful um, it just really I think like sometimes baby loss can just throw up a lot of other issues um, and it certainly did for me and so just going to prof you know professional therapy and talking through some of those things was was really helpful um, I think also I mean I wouldn't I wouldn't say that I'm at peace with his death at all but I do feel that his life had a purpose and I do feel that I can see that I, I, I feel that I'm a, I'm a better person. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a better person because of him. Um, so I can see the good that has been able to come out of the situation and um, that, that does, that does help me. Um, to think about his his life as having that impact um and that that he was kind of he he mattered and he and he will forever be um part of our family and what would you say to someone who is experiencing baby loss or who's experienced baby loss um i would say definitely what's really important is to talk about their baby and not just pretend that it didn't happen because I feel like a lot of people are scared to mention them because they think they're going to upset you or they think that they're going to remind you of what's happened but like the person who's lost their baby they're never going to forget like it's not like you're going to say ask them a question and they're suddenly going to go oh god I'd forgotten about it and now you've just reminded me they think about it every single day you'll never be bringing up something that isn't already in their mind and it's re I found it personally really comforting for people and still do for people to talk about Maisie because when you have a baby you want to you know shout it from the rooftops that you've had a baby and you want to talk to people about it and have them ask questions and you do still get the same feeling I certainly did when I had Maisie I wanted people to know that I'd had a baby because mm. they're still a person and they're still like Rachel said, like they're part of your family. They're like, they'll always be part of your family. So you want people to just acknowledge them, mm. you know, and, and, you know, ask, ask you how you're doing or when, when significant dates come round, mm. you know, for them to say, Oh, it's Macy's birthday coming up or, you know, and asking, ask you, how you're doing mm. you know just little things like that um and also in the first instance of when it first happens we found quite practical things really helpful so like my mum made us dinners that she mm. dropped at the house and that was really helpful because you're in such a 
um, fog that you don't really think about that sort of thing and you mm. can just end up just not eating for the whole day mm. because you're not really your head's not in it so that was really helpful just sort of really practical mm. um, practical things um, I think yeah. that's good to support to support people yeah. I think the most helpful thing that somebody said to me was I just don't know what to say to you mm. and that was honestly the best thing that someone could have said because I think there is a tendency, we all have the same tendency of when something awful has happened, you just want to make it better for that person. So you use that dreaded phrase of at least, at least this, at least you have Jude, at least you have Leo, at least, at, at least it wasn't, you know, a, um, a, a cot death, at least this, at least this. And all the time when people are saying that, they're diminishing your loss and what you've been through. And actually, the best thing you can say is just, I am so sorry, and I just don't know what to say. This is just, this is just awful. Um, because I think sometimes trying to fix it, like we, like Sarah was saying, like we know that we've lost a baby. We know that we're, we're, we're dealing with that grief. So sit with us in it. And, um, you know, it's going to be a long journey and, you know, your your friend or your loved one that's going through it is not going to be very fun for quite a long time. Um, but they're still your friend and they're still your loved one. And it's just walking with people through that difficult time um, is hard. But that is what um, what you need. Um, I think yeah. a lot of people think that they don't know what to say, but I always think it's better to say something, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. definitely. It is. Yeah, I think we do have a weird sort of we're not very good at dealing with with death really mm. I, I think it's like a cultural thing there's other cultures mm. that are they they act very differently when yeah. a loved mm. one dies and we sort of go along the um thing of you know you just bury it and you know keep it all within and yeah. just get on with your life but it's not really like you know it's not really like that and I don't think it's healthy to do that either no like you need to be able to talk about it and you need to be able to grieve. You can't just pretend everything's all right. Yeah. I think and it's, I think also also it's just, sorry, well, you saw Rachel. Sorry, Emma. No, I was just gonna say, I think, I think also the other thing is just being guided by the parents as well, because, um, you know, some people, I know there's a huge thing recently with Chrissy Teigen um, and John Legend losing their little boy, Jack. And, um, that really resonated with me because it was a similar time that I um, lost Solomon. Um, and one of the things that I find the most difficult is that um, in this country, we allow medical terminations up to 24 weeks. And because Solomon was shy of that, I don't have a death certificate, which I find really, really difficult because I went in to labour, I delivered him, I held him, I had time with him. So it was a stillbirth, um, but it's known as a late fetal loss because of, of that kind of legal te technicality. So I will always say I had a stillbirth um, because I think that that fits my experience. Um, uh, not to diminish anything from a miscarriage at all, because that is devastating, but it doesn't fit with what I what I went through, what Andy and I went through. So I think it's just being guided by the parents and the language that they use, um, how they talk about their child, if they want to share pictures with you, um, you know, that it's it's about them and it's about what's going to help them. So um you, and I think people just unless you've been through it, you just you you just it's very difficult to understand. But that time that you have with your baby you it's cramming all that love into a very short space of time um and you never get that again mm -hmm. so of course you would want to take pictures of that and of course you would would want to record it in some way um because you would do that if your child was living and i think people just sometimes really struggle to get their heads around that and mm -hmm. I would, I would just say to those people, look, I know it's like uncomfortable. I know it's, you know, upsetting, um, but it's not about you. It's about the parents. And if it makes you feel uncomfortable, then don't look. 
um, or make a donation to Tommy's so it stops happening. Yeah, one of those options. Yeah, and yeah. I know I was speaking to you the other day, Rachel, about obviously lots of women also have um, miscarriages early on in their pregnancy and how, you know, in a society that we're quite good at putting people into a hierarchy, but actually mm. every single story is unique and um, every story is valid and, you know, every person deals with their grief in a different way. So um, Definitely. There is, there is no hierarchy in this. A wanted baby lost at any stage is devastating to, to that family. Um, and, yeah, you know, I think um, it's just respecting that and supporting the family and echoing the words and the language that they use around their child mm. yeah I think definitely that what you were saying Rachel about the that their sort of cut off lines between mm. miscarriage and stillbirth is is really difficult because I personally feel and I know I'm no expert but if you've given birth to a baby and you've gone through labor and you have held them that surely is a stillbirth. Mm. Like, I, I don't really, you know, there, there's no difference between one week that one person's mm. had a miscarriage mm. and the other person's had a stillbirth, that their babies are basically going to be pretty much the same. Yeah. They're not going to be yeah. much, more, much bigger or no. developed or whatever a week on. I just, I know there needs to be a cut off somewhere, but yeah. I feel like going through that experience of giving birth to a baby and then you can't even register them or mm. um you know and then it's it's termed as a as a miscarriage i just think that it's um it's wrong really yeah and i think that's why we obviously at st peter's um they always do they do a funeral anyway for ev every every baby um but we decided to do our own and i think that was because i just wanted that public recognition of what we had lost as a family um, and that funeral was really important to me I wanted people to see I wanted people to see the tiny coffin I wanted people to see the grief because I didn't want people to think that we were overreacting in some way or just I don't know I don't, I don't know I think all sorts of thoughts go through your head don't they in those situations but for me that was really that was really really important um and there's no right or wrong way to agree no you. no and, um, it's finding your way isn't it and um mm. like you say talking is so important yeah thank you so much ladies it's been so um i'm sure it's really touched many people who are listening today um so thank you so much for sharing your stories i know it wasn't necessarily easy but i really think um people will really be touched by it and people will find it such an encouragement so thank you so much thank you, and, um, thank you for do, putting on the service i think yeah. um, well i hope people have uh, found some comfort in it so thank you ladies okay thank take you. care bye. bye bye so now we're going to go over to vicky baker who's going to read us a poem called dad's hurt too When Dad's Hurt Too, Author Unknown People don't always see the tears a dad cries His heart is broken too when his child dies He tries to hold it together and be strong Even though his world has gone wrong He holds his wife as her tears fall And comforts her through it all He goes through his day doing what he's supposed to do but a piece of his heart has been ripped away too. So when he's alone, he lets out his pain and his tears come like falling rain. His world has crashed in around him and a world that was once bright has gone dim. He feels he has got to be strong for others, but dad's hurt too, not just mothers. He searches for answers, but none are to be found. He hides behind a mask when he's feeling down. He smiles through his tears, his struggles and holds in his fears. But what you see on the outside is not always real. Men don't always show how they really feel. So I'd like to ask a favour of you. The next time you see a mother hurting over the loss of her child, please remember, Dad's hurt too. 
We're now going to have a time of reflection as we hear a piece of music called Winter Bear, written especially for those uh, of us who have suffered uh, baby loss and find this time incredibly difficult. It's going to be sung to us by a local mum called Kelly Stewart and do spend this time uh, reflecting on your candle and thinking and praying about your child. This evening helpful and just over these few short minutes have found again some friendship some peace and again some knowledge that God is with us in our journeys of grief he saw his own child die and wept as he did that and his son also wept at the grave of his friend Lazarus 
Jesus weeps with us in our journey and carries us through. Do continue to get in touch if you need help with your grief journey. And we're going to close tonight with our final blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you his peace. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. May it rest upon you and all those you love through this grief journey and into the next life with him. In Jesus' name. Amen.